Good morning. It's good to see you on this beautiful sunny, sunny, not too hot day outside. And we have come not just to worship, we've come to gather to worship. Hopefully this past week there's been moments that you have said, God, you're just a wonderful God. You're thanking him for who he is, uh, for his presence, for what he's done for us in Christ, for all of that. And so we, we're now taking the worship we've had in the past, in the past week and gathering today together to worship and be encouraged to worship and encouraged to love him more. And so I invite you to stand with us today. Uh, there's three different verses that goes around there, but this is from Philippians. Paul is writing to people who are followers of Christ, and just giving us that encouragement of who he is. So let's read this together. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, that so at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, Philippians 2, 9 to 11. So this is encouraging us that who, who we are worshiping, why we are here, why we have been uh, saved because of what Jesus has done. And this is the, our desire, but this is God's desire, that every tongue, every person will worship Him. So let's sing, all hail the power of Jesus' name.
smile at myself at times. Or, <laughs> and sometimes I cry at myself. <laughs> but that's, that's why we worship God, because He's holy. We are not. He is perfect. I am not. Oh, no, I love you. Okay. So you know, it's good but because of all He is, and that's why I love this song, is how great is our God. This is a song we sing together with. This is a song to be every, every thought of us. As you see, like the nature scenes behind you, as we just go through life, as you take a breath of air, as you think, God has gifted us all. And that's why how God is so great, but the greatest thing is what he's done for us through Christ. So let's sing this, How Great Is Thou.
come up to Ruth. Fabulous. By the way, if you're really wanting something good to read, read the book of Ruth in the Bible. You find out the greatness of God in, in life and all that it is. And those who are going to children's church. Oh, Christy. Just a, a side note for the past four weeks. Life in the Central Council has just been crazy. We had mission teams and our co rally days and went down to Missouri to my mom celebrated her 90th birthday yesterday and she's doing great. Saw family, did a lot of unexpected plumbing, uh, so it's been frustrating. So uh, I just ask that you pray for me this week. This week, there's, there's like a beautiful week on my schedule. And just pray that the Lord keeps a beautiful week on my schedule. I know he's sovereign in all things, and he is the king of kings, and, and he has all time in his hands. He has my life in his hands, too. But I'm looking forward to a normal week this week. So if you're going to be abnormal, wait till the next week. <laughs> No. Uh, thank you for just being here today. It's a it's great time. It's a great day to gather together, and uh, we are we, we come together because all our lives is you have different lives than I've had, but that's why I love about gathering together because we have all of our struggles. We have different blessings. We have so many um, things that we need, and we need fans. Um, uh, just uh, so we gather together to worship Him. And, and as you see more and more things coming around of our summer fest that's coming up, you'll hear more about that at the end. It's all about twists and turns, and it's based upon the scripture passage, Psalm 25, 4, which says, Make your ways known to me, Lord. Teach me your paths. That is such a great prayer. You know, there's, there's different scripture verses at times I put on my mirror or different places in my house. But this is a great one to wake up. God, this is, this is my desire for the day. Make your ways known to me, Lord. Because even in this past four weeks of chaos, I continue to have this prayer. He does that. No matter if it's plumbing or if it's health or whatever, God's ways are still there. His, his paths are, are there for me to follow. No matter the, the chaos around you, no matter the blessings around you, the joy. And so that is a great thing to memorize great verse to memorize, great verse just to have around, put in your car. Um, you have to drive your own car, but he can give you wisdom in that. Uh, but, but God is good. So we've been, we've been looking at uh, the life of Peter, and today we're looking at this word trustworthy. Worthy of trust. That's what it means. Uh, we've all gone through broken trust before. Uh, we've had broken trust on the job with friendships, relationships. Uh, we've had a lot of those things in the past. I want to talk about those. But we also have people that we count trustworthy in our lives. And that's good. That's a blessing from God. Because uh, we can trust them with our finances. Some people we trust with our hurts and fears. We're able to open up to them. Sometimes we just trust them with a possession. Here, you can drive my car. I know you need one. Um, you trust them in so many ways. And so again, we're, today we're looking at Peter, as we look through Peter through the Summerfest process, and these different stories about Peter. And if you remember, we talked about it pretty heavily last week, but Peter was a fisherman. And it's not a, get out the side of the shore and cast in a line, but this is going out in a boat. We talked about last week, casting nets is a dirty job, it's a hard job, it's a frustrating job at all times, because at times, because we have all those. But at this point, Peter is now following Jesus. Remember, Jesus said, hey, come follow me. And so he and others left their jobs and started following Jesus full time. I mean, that's a crazy thought to me. It's a crazy thought to all of us to quit our jobs and just follow Jesus. But we, Jesus still calls us to follow him. Um, and so Jesus had been teaching on the seashore, just like he did last week. This is a different scenario. Uh, because, again, it was, it was a good place to teach. And so, 
After teaching, Jesus is going, okay, now it's time to go to a new, new location to teach people. So we're picking this up in Matthew chapter 14 today. Immediately he, Jesus, made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. All right, and so he wanted his disciples to get away, and Jesus was going to, however he did, say, hey, I'm done teaching. Go away. That's not how he said it. But he dismissed the crowds somehow. I'm sure he prayed for them. I'm sure he blessed them somehow, but it was time for him to get away. But, and so he sent the disciples ahead, but this is what Jesus did. After dismissing the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Well into the night, he was there alone. This is a very convicting verse, because sometimes we are so tired, and prayer is the last thought in our mind. But Jesus, in his, in his human body, he is Almighty God, but confined out to the human body. His body gets tired, but he knows and he knew that he needed to talk to his Father God. Just like we need to talk to God. He knew he needed to, 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 to ask him and fellowship with him and whatever he was doing. We don't know what he's praying about. But he, after this long day, he went and up to the mountain by himself to pray. And that's such a good example. To get by ourselves to pray. Because we, we get to, we're around people a lot. And we don't have alone time. We're around these things a lot. And we don't have alone time. And it's good to just go, okay. Time with me and God. Whenever it is. Jesus prayed early in the morning at times. Sometimes he prayed during the day by himself. Here he's praying at night by himself. But this is what he does. So an encouragement to us. Go on with the story. Meanwhile... The boat was already some distance from the land, battered by the waves, because the wind was against them. You ever been out in a boat with the wind against you? Not a motorboat, but just a paddling boat. Yes. I remember one time, as I was 14 years old, my cousin was with me out of my other uncle's place that had around the lake. We went out in a, a flat bottom rowboat. We get out there, and all of a sudden, the wind changed. And the waves were this tall. They were about this tall. But that tall. And it was, that's what we felt like. It was, it was frightening. We didn't have life jackets out there to swim, but still out in the middle of a lake. It was, it was frightening. And these guys were fishermen. Remember this. They'd gone through experiences like this. But it was hard. This is a normal story now. Then Jesus came toward them, walking on the sea very early in the morning. But just a simple Bible verse right here. You know, just Jesus out there walking on the water. You know, and, and we think about things like that, walking on the water. What were the waves like? The waves were battering against the ship. The wind was strong, and Jesus is walking across the water. He's not going, Whoa! you know, we don't know. I don't think so. He's just walking. Because he's the one who's the creator of all. He's the one who has control of all creation. And so Jesus comes walking on the water, on the waves, and then when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost! He's grown men, crying out in fear. It's a ghost! All right. I want to tell you something. This is a... There's no such thing as ghosts. You're dead, you're dead. The Bible says that. But there are demons. There really are demons. And I believe demons act as ghosts. They, they do things to freak us out. But this is what's going on. They, in their mind, they're freaked out. This is something they've never seen. They've never had one of their buddies come walking out to them on the waves in the middle of the night. But let me tell you what this fear does. We've talked about fear quite a bit here recently. Fear changes your mind. Remember that? It, it, it gets you to grab hold of things that are not real. It gets you to hold on to things that are maybe happening. But that's what's going on with these guys who have been following Jesus. Remember, Jesus is the one who sent them out there. Jesus was the one who said, come follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And, and now they're out in the sea, and they're afraid of their life, and then all of a sudden, this this Spirit that they think is coming out. So immediately Jesus spoke to them, Have courage, it is I. 
Don't be afraid. By the way, just, I don't like to say, it is I. But that's, that's what the original language says, it is I. I'd say, hey, it's me. It's, it's me, Jesus. Well, I'm not saying that, but he did. But he's saying, hey, it's me. It's not a ghost. Don't be afraid. So again, going back to fears that we've talked about before, when we understand who God is and he's with us all the time, we can understand that this is God always with us. Take courage. There. Now, that would be just a great whole thing to grab a hold of and talk about the fear. But as Paul Harvey said, the rest of the story. not for the rest of the story. How many have never heard of Paul Harvey? Come on. I've never heard of Paul Harvey? <laughs> yeah, it's Paul Harvey. Great guy. He was a radio guy. And he always told the story, and it's now for the rest of the story, get the backstory. So the rest of the story goes on here. Remember, on a boat, winds are coming, Jesus is walking out, out the sea. And so, Lord, if it's you, Peter answered, command me to come to you on the water. A lot of us have heard the story growing up in church. You've heard the story and have the pictures in your mind. This is not a normal response. You know that? That's not a normal response. Because Peter's never done this. Nobody else has ever done this. And Peter said, hey, if that's you, first it was a ghost. But if that's you, Jesus, command me to come out in the water. He didn't say, hey, is it okay for me to come out in the water? Because he didn't want an okay. He wanted a command to come out in the water. So Jesus said, come. And climbing out of the boat, Peter started walking in the water and came toward Jesus. Uh, by the way, just it's funny how the world, people who do not believe in Scripture, do not believe in God, do not believe in this story, how they have made this. I've, I've read this from, from people out there, that Jesus knew where the rocks were. Peter was on, were on the rocks at the beginning, but then somehow got off the rocks as he was walking to Jesus out in the middle of the sea. Okay, See, it takes more faith to not believe these things than to really believe this. But here... This is where trust comes into play. Peter said, command me. Jesus said, come. That's it. <coughs> he didn't say, look down there and try to figure it out. He just said, come. And sometimes we look at scriptures differently. We should look at the commands of God and say, okay, I'm going. We are to trust God. And obey God. And that's what Peter did right here. He trusted who he knew was out there. And he immediately, obedience came in. He was confident in Jesus. He was confident in the word. He had never been led astray from Jesus. He had seen him, as talked about last week, as holy, as different, as completely different than anybody he's ever met. From his words, his actions, everything about him. And following Jesus changes everything that Poster talks about, we talked about last week. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid. Beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. By the way, have you ever talked to somebody who's talking about those rocks? Have you ever seen a rock that floats and then sinks? Can you stand on it? No. A turtle, maybe. But it wasn't anything. What happened to Peter? Where were his eyes? No longer on Jesus. Peter was now looking at circumstances instead of who he was looking at a minute ago. The trust that he had and the confidence in the one who was before him disappeared because he now goes, oh, look where I am. <coughs> Evidently God is not with me. Evidently nothing is here. Trust went away and problems came in. No more peace. I mean, he's confident. No more hope. He's sinking. And the only right response is his response. Save me. Lord, save me. That word Lord there is, is that boss Lord. Um, you, you are the king. You are the one. Save me. And this is not save me from the penalty of my sins. This is save me from my situation. Lord, save me. But Jesus thought about 
And he goes, now, you got yourself in your own situation. You're going to have to swim the shore. Now hold it. <laughs> Immediately, Jesus reached out, caught hold of his hand, and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? So there's this wonderful, neat story that we've been following here this morning of, of just the greatness of God, the coolness of Peter, who said, Hey, come in, you come out. And then Jesus turns around after Peter's failing, after Peter's looking at the situation instead of Christ. Jesus tells him the truth, which we need to be told that truth. Where's your faith? How come you are confident here, but all of a sudden you look here? Why are you doubting? And I'm not telling you to go out walking water, because this is the only time it happens. Jesus doesn't tell us to go walk on water, but in everyday life, he says, keep your eyes on me. Keep following me. And when we start looking at everything around us, something happens. Why do you doubt? Jesus is trustworthy. No matter what, Jesus is trustworthy. Because the only problem that arose here is when Peter no longer thought that Jesus was trustworthy. But Jesus doesn't fail. Jesus is trustworthy. This is the thought for the day in uh, our summer festival day. And so, remember, Jesus reached down, grabbed Peter by the hand, scolds him. Tells him, not really scolds him, but just tells him the truth. Wanting Peter to understand the truth. The very next verse is, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. So again, this is all chaos going out there. Peter gets saved, and they walk back to the boat, and the wind ceases. Then those in the boat worshipped him and said, Truly you are the Son of God. But first, they saw Jesus out there who they thought was a ghost. They heard the word that Jesus said to Peter, Come! They saw Peter walking on the water. They saw Peter fade. They saw Jesus save Peter and walk back onto the boat. And when they walked on the boat, all of a sudden the wind failed, stopped them. And then, wow, they worshipped him. We don't see this happening much with Jesus in this, in, when he was walking on this life, in this world, in this life. But here, they worshipped him. <coughs> Remember last week when Peter knelt at Jesus' knees and worshipped this is a different situation completely. Now, a bunch of people out in boats who were afraid for their lives, who were afraid for ghosts, saw and understood more about who he was. Because Jesus had command over all of creation. <laughs> we want that, don't we? Amen. Our garden's dry. And, God, please send the rain. Not over there! <laughs> you know, that's what we've, we've seen a lot, you know. Last week, I know we got like a, a sprinkle in I think Ben said he got 1.3 inches at his house. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> we want that command of creation. But Jesus has that command of creation because in Colossians, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. And firstborn doesn't mean he was born first. That language in the Bible means he is in command over. If you're firstborn in the family, back then the culture was you are in command, second in command under the parents. You command over all creation. I mean, over your family, or whatever. Here, he is in command of creation because he is the image. He is the scene of the invisible God. Jesus came here for everything was created by him in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, where the thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him, Jesus, and for him, Jesus. Jesus was the creator, part of that creation. All things. So that means you are his creation. You are subject to him. <coughs> he is before all things, he continues to say. And by him, all things hold together. Your body, this world, this universe, 
is being held together by the command of Jesus. If Jesus goes, nope, we're apart. Also, he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. Again, so when, when we are looking to God, we don't think this way very much. Peter was thinking that for a while. He goes, man, that's, that's Jesus out there. Really? Is it Jesus? Hey, Jesus, command me. And if you say come, I'm coming. Come. So Peter's like, yes. You're the first born of Christ. You are the Lord. You're the king. You're everything that I've heard about and seen. And he goes, but all of a sudden, it goes away. Following Jesus changes everything. In your life. There are many people who say they follow Jesus and nothing's changed. Except maybe they show up in a room like this occasion. It changes everything when you understand who Jesus is. And when you understand who Jesus is, you're going, man, he is trustworthy. He does have me in his hands. Continue back in Colossians, for God was pleased to have all the fullness dwell in him as Jesus came in the flesh. And through him to reconcile everything to himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Now, Peter didn't understand this. He didn't know this at the time he was sinking, but we do. And that's why we should have more trust in Christ than Peter did at this time. Because Peter had not seen the resurrected Christ. He didn't see him die on the cross yet. Be in grave three days and see him again. I mean, yes, he had that opportunity to listen and talk to him, and he's saved by his hand now. But we have, if we truly believe that God is God, if we truly believe this is his word, we should have trust because he is trustful. But we are like Peter at times. We think God has forgotten us because of our life. Our life needs to say, Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid. He was afraid. Just pausing right there. I don't know where your life is right now. I don't know what your week has been like. I don't know where your thoughts are. But when you're afraid, when you don't have trust in God, your life will sink. Your heart will sink. Your hopes will sink. Your peace will sink. Your love will sink. Everything will sink. Because you have your eyes on everything else around you. And that's why I talk about so many people have their eyes on the news so much. And the hope is not in God. So many people have eyes on their friendships. Their hope is not in God. Hope in their, their finances and not in God. Again, Peter had it, then he wavered. We have it, then we waver. And that's why we need to describe to God, God save me. Give me back on the right paths. Remember what it says? Make your ways known to me, Lord. Teach me your paths. Continue to call out to him. Because we're not going to find satisfaction in anything. When, when Peter took his eyes off Jesus, fear came in. But God is so good, again, because when we call out to save me, he does. He didn't tell Peter again. It's like, well, you're there. It's your fault. He does, by the way, let sin's consequences happen to us. He saves us from a lot of that. Sometimes he, he needs us to wake up to our own choices. But I was thinking about this too. I don't think many want God to save them from their situation in reality. They want to be saved from their situation. But they don't want God to save them from their situation. Because if, if God truly saves you from your situation, you're going to have to be thankful for that. I just want to be out of this. That's all I want. I just want to be out of this. And God's like, Go, try, try to get out. Go ahead. I've been there. Try to get out of my 
myself. But following Jesus changes everything. Changes your mindset. Changes your hopes. Changes everything. True faith changes everything by, by changing your destiny from hell to heaven, from darkness to light, from hopelessness to all hope, all that peace, love, joy. He rescued us. Colossians 1.13 He rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the Son He loves. God the Father rescued us through Christ. We didn't do it. And that's when we first come to Christ, we say, Lord, save me. That's the call. I cannot save myself. And I'm not just going down. I am down. The Bible says we are dead in our trespasses and sins. We are at the bottom of the ocean. We, are, we cannot come out. That's why the only hope we have is God to save us. And he did that and does that through Christ. Because in him we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Because of his salvation. So that's the initial part. But just like Peter, we, we get our lives distracted. And truly, if Jesus changes everything, Jesus changes everything. Not just a Sunday. Not just a part of a day on Sunday. He changes everything. There were the people in the boat said, truly, honestly, this is the Son of God. Because they had heard, they had seen everything going on to. So we trust God for eternity through faith in Christ. But we are to trust God for every day. So looking back at your life this past week, this past month now, talking to me, where was your trust in God? Where was it? Were your eyes on him the whole week? Or were you looking at so many other things? Because once your eyes are off of Christ, peace leaves and fear comes in. And the only hope we have is to cry out. That's why the Bible calls repent. That's what we are to do. Not just at the beginning of salvation, but all the time. Because we get our eyes on so many things. And, and repent is a change of mind, which is a change of life. Then. Honestly repent. To God, save me. So first, are you a follower of Christ? If you've never come to Christ, then God, God sent Jesus so you can be reconciled to Him. Reconciled to God the Father so you can have righteousness, so you can have a different eternity. And through His work, call out to him. It's by faith, it's not by the things that we do. But Colossians also says, we are saved by grace through faith, and that's his gift, but it says we are also his workmanship. Meaning we're continuing to follow, we're continuing to look to the Lord of Lords. So, if you're following Christ right now, are you, like Peter, sinking down in fear? Because all you see is this. Trust Jesus. Follow Jesus. And do it with others. Because that's just great help. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you are so good to us. God, we get our eyes so easily distracted. We get our hearts easily turned. But Lord, you were there. When we are singing, God, you're there. And God, you are calling us to call out to you. Not just for the situation, but Lord, so we would follow you, trust you, that our lives would be changed. And God, through our lives, other people would see what you've done and who you are. Lord, may we turn our eyes and keep our eyes on Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Please stand as we sing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. That first verse out of the hymnal, the second verse we sing out of is a different verse.
Change services. So this week, it'll, if you've tried in the, since June 30th, you have not been able to do so. 
So it'll be changed this week. Uh, just so you might have set up a new account. So those who have done that, um, I'll just let you know it'll be fixed this week. And so I pray that you bless the food for our bodies. God, thank you just for gifts you give people to, to cook or to buy. Um, things for us to eat, for the, for the taste that we have, digest the system, everything you do, God. You're just a good God for us. We thank you for that. But Lord, thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you for what you've given us that we cannot fully understand. But thank you that it is not by our works, not by us, but it's all by you um, and our faith in Jesus. And so thank you for that. And Lord, as we sing, finish singing by just how great God you are, uh, help us to really, really know that each moment of our lives. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
you're yelling, that's why it goes in. Is that all? No, it's not. Okay.